for me, and I'm guessing a lot of other parents my age, our parents didn't really know a lot about gaming. And if, like for me, your kids now want to get into gaming or are gamers already, well, things are about to be a bit different from when you grew up. So you kind of need to remember two things. First of all, this will be very different from when you started out. And secondly, with great power must also come great responsibility. Now, my parents weren't distant or anything, they did occasionally try to keep an eye on what games I was playing, but it was my thing, and I was pretty much left to my own devices. Fun pretty much intended there. I generally bought my own games or wished for games for my birthdays or for holidays. If the box made it seem too adult for me, then they would just pretty much not buy it. That was the extent of the parental controls in what was available for me to play. And when I started playing games online, I mean, my parents didn't really talk to me that much about how to act online or how to meet people digitally and how to watch out for strangers online because it wasn't really a thing, or at least not to them. They didn't really get it, most likely because they didn't really know that much about the online world at that point. It was still pretty new. And now, luckily, I was a reasonable young lad. I didn't act like a douche or troll at people online or grief people. And I should add, I pretty much still am. I mean, never did it in the physical world. Why should I do it in the digital, I guess? When I was in my mid-teens, I was regularly chatting with strangers online. People from around the world, some sometimes three times my age, easily, and they became friends. Now, I don't know, maybe I just got lucky. Maybe it's simply because I'm a man. Or maybe times have just changed and things like that aren't as common anymore. Or maybe it's just what we're led to believe and it is common. I don't know. And in my teens, when I reached some really low mental points, those communities played a big part in helping me get out of it. They supported me and was a great support net to have. So, now your kids want to play video games, or maybe they already do. Very little of the experience you had growing up will be applicable in how you teach them to be good gamers. For starters, parental controls exist now and are pretty good at some platforms. Secondly, you probably have a big library of games, at least I do, but what in that library is good for my kid to play? What's okay to play? And what games are in the category of I hope they never find out this exists? Now, most likely your parents didn't even have to ask those questions. But you and I, however, we do. And things like, when is it okay that they play online? When is it okay that they play online with friends? When can they play online with strangers? Heck, when I was seven years old, playing with strangers online wasn't even a thing. It didn't exist. I mean, my six-year-old can barely read yet. So how can he tell an invitation from a real-life friend in Pokemon Unite, for example, to one from some stranger that he has never met but accidentally added to his friend list? Being a parent with gaming kids today means supervision is key, platform parental controls is key, but most importantly, communication is key. You need to set the ground rules, not just you for your kids and you with your partner for your kids, but you together with your partner and your kids on what games they're allowed to play. Don't just go off of PEGI ratings or ESRB ratings. Take, for example, a game like The Crew 2. It has a PEGI rating of 12 and an ESRB rating of 10, and sure, some part of that might be from the online component that you can race with friends online. But according to the listing on ESRB's website, the reason for that rating is because there are profanities, sexual references and drug references in the soundtrack of the game, in the background music. And not in all songs, just a few of them. So does this mean that your kids shouldn't play this game at all? Does it mean that they can play the game but with the soundtrack off? Or is it totally fine because they won't get the references and they just like cars, bikes, planes and boats? and racing, then yeah, that's up to you, not the ratings board, to make the decision. The ratings board is there to help you make the decision, but it's not there to make the decision for you. On some platforms, you can easily say, this game is allowed, this game is not allowed, and then the not allowed games don't even show up. But not all platforms are like that. If the parental controls on your platform of choice is lacking, the importance of building trust and having an agreement with the child about the boundaries of what games they're allowed to play is even more important. Just because you use a platform like, for example, Google Stadia, which has settings where you can allow or disallow games on an individual basis, doesn't mean you can just let go either. Maybe their friends in school have different rules. Maybe they use different platforms that don't have these parental controls. And let's be honest, you probably don't want your 10-year-old to be playing GTA Online with strangers on the internet at a friend's house, right? So, so talk, discuss, and explain to them why these things are important, why you have these rules, and what to think about them. Come to an agreement and trust that your kid will follow that agreement. 
And also make sure that they trust that you set these rules for good reasons. Make sure that they think that these rules are reasonable and be open in your discussions. Now, I, I assume that the granularity in the parental settings for a newer platform like Google Stadia is probably due to the fact that it's much more younger. They were able to keep these things in mind from day one on development because it was a thing. It wasn't a thing back when Nintendo first started making consoles. And the fact that they can do that is a good thing because it means I can make informed choices. Like for example, my kid can only get friend invites from people of their friends or only friends can see when he's online or ask him to play with them. It means I can be assured that the technology works with me and not against me. Some older platforms that we have here at home, like the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch are way behind in that regard. There, let's be honest, you can barely lean on the platform doing the legwork for you. And when it comes to the online gaming part, don't raise someone who becomes a troll, a griefer, or an online douchebag. That's really it. Same goes for offline, but also online. So come on, one kid at a time. Let's make the internet troll free, right? Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. Uh, see you around.